Dude, when you can get a crowd to react to the things that you're saying on the microphone or the things that you do, dude, it's the best thing in the world. And you know that it sticks with them. They take it home with them. I'm friends with a lot of fans on Facebook and I'll see Facebook posts about their favorite moments of the night. And if you end up on it, you're like, I'm fine, that's it. It's something that not most people can do. And it validates an existence almost. I love wrestling so much that I had to become one. I can't love it any other way. Six minutes in, six minutes in. Kick her out! Is that what they're supposed to do? Should we tell them? You gotta kick her out. She caught her. Tell her she's gotta leave. She, he, she was supposed to be kicked out. It was supposed to be a robot. And they're early on. I hope they do it again. Uh, they better do it again. I just basically want to provide a place where people can come in, I can show them what we do, and we can help them along along their journey. Like, okay. So by the time when he hits, then we're both going down and up at the same time. He, he, he has too much space. He doesn't bend over enough. Well, right now, the wrestling to me is everything. It's my life. It's how I, it's how I feed my daughter. It's how I pay, pay for the roof over my head. It, it's how I support everything in my home. It, it's, it's how I live, and it hasn't always been that way, but it's, uh, it's how I've, at least in, the, in the, re the last, you know, seven, eight years, it's how I always treated it. And I started to treat wrestling as if it was my living, or long before it was my living, because that's really the only way I felt I was ever going to get it to become my living. When I decided I wanted to do this for a living, it, it, I, can't, I can't really tell you. I don't really remember. I remember always thinking it would be cool to do it for a living, but I don't remember early on really having a lot of aspirations of chasing it. There was a time when it kind of just hit me that, you know what, uh, I've been screwing around long enough, and I decided that I wanted to give it a little more of a go. I wanted to take it a little more serious. A lot of times people say that a championship makes a man, but in my case, I make the championship. And when you step into the ring with Anaya, you better prepare to protect your neck. Thank you. He is your Rocky Mountain Pro Charge Champion. Please welcome Anaya. Well, Anaya with an Anaya Rock sign <laughs> gives it to a fan who's got his Anaya shirt on. Charge Champion Anaya ready to do battle against Humphrey Jacobs the first. Humphrey Jacobs the first. I grew up watching wrestling. Of course, I, I, I was. Uh, I grew up in the, in the Attitude Era when wrestling was at its peak, and I just fell in love with it. Um, I never knew that I can do it for like, like do it like this. So it took me a while to find it because I was playing football for most of my life. So it's it's pretty much just a passion that I that I picked up and kind of ran with because I love it so much. You were deprived of the greatest tag team in this promotion. It's a year and a half, he was gone. So, for those of you that don't know, we are the world's most dangerous tag team. His name is Hoodie, my name is Anaya, and we are the Left Coast Gorilla! To make a living out of it, uh, I'm on my way there. 
I've been doing it for three years, and the first the first year and a half was mostly spending money to go places and wrestle. The thing with pro wrestling is not a lot of people have experienced the things that we experience in the ring and so it's a different kind of um, athleticism that you need to be a pro wrestler because it's so much different than any other sport. And you can go and I, I can take, you, you've never thrown a ball before in your life and I can take you to the, to the park and you can throw a ball within three seconds. But if I take you to that ring it's going to take you up, uh, like a, a couple days to figure out how to take a bump. At, at, let alone tell a story. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Bill Gray. I'm six foot two, two hundred and seventy two pounds. And you can bet your ass on two ah. <laughs> I wrestled all the way from kindergarten to college. I was a state champion in freestyle, Greco-Roman, and folk-style wrestling. And ever since the moment I was born, when I punched my way out of my mother's womb, all 12 pounds, 6 ounces, kicked the doctor in the teeth, slapped the nurse on the ass, I was engineered to be a WWE superstar. <sighs> This is a message to everybody else in the Tough Enough contest. Y'all best get your silver polish ready, because you're only compete for runner-up. Why do some people go to college for 20 years? Why do some people get in the back of a two-ton bull and try to ride it for eight seconds? I don't know, man. It's just how, personally, I'm wired. It's just what I was meant to do. Like. Some people were born to t run touchdowns and some people were born to, you know, kick field goals. I was born to put on fake fur and go scream at people and then pick them, over, pick them up over my head and body slam them. Usually Bill. This is totally a horse stable. This is a horse stable. Sometimes, you know, venues are, you're changing weird places. And this has actually been one of the better places, honestly. They set this out all up for us. They cover up all, you know, the, the horse and the dirt stuff and get us some nice chairs in here. Usually this is a lot better setup, but as you can see, we've had three 300 pound men rummaging around in here all day. So things have gotten a little bit out of hand. I've had places where you're literally changing out in the parking lot behind the building. At this level, I mean, if you have a, if you have a good locker room, consider yourself lucky. When I first started, I did not really have a character. I was kind of just singlet guy. Just random, I was trying things out and then somebody just suggested, hey, you know, you're Scandinavian, why don't you be a Viking? And with the character, it's easy to make people laugh and still be, still be this overbearing destroyer because it's just, it just works like that. No match, not match, tonight! 
So my family has always been very big on amateur wrestling, like collegiate wrestling. And with that mindset, this professional wrestling is very frowned upon. They view it as pretty much the bottom grade, but my parents, after they started coming to the show, started realizing like what it actually is and got out of that kind of amateur wrestler mindset that it's, it's fun. They enjoy it. And slowly they're starting to come around and realize like what I do is not, not degrading, not bad in any way. And since I'm having fun at it, it's not really up to them. It was good. Last night was really good. <clears throat> good crowd at Rack House, and they were loud the whole night. So they were really getting, really getting into what we were doing. So I say we. I just, I just watched last night. <laughs> Got home late last night, so didn't get a whole lot of sleep. But TV today, so it's always fun. We got new TV show trying to, trying to keep this ball rolling forward. You know. So is that even a term? This is Christopher Long. He helps us with production. A friend of mine from St. Louis, or St. Louis area, right? Area. So he flies in once a month to help us out with with uh, producing the television show. He's actually looking up a few things today. He needs to you see. You have a pre-tape in segment two of, I think it's the second show with Mario. I mean, it's with Mario. What am I doing? So you're, it looks like you're having a back and forth. Does it say office or anything like that? Like if I'm in the office, or I don't think he doesn't have he, he doesn't have anything like that. There's no physicality, it's right? Captured out, no. It just says you're basically it's continuing to play on how bad of a mood you're in. Me, bad mood. <laughs> so <laughs> this is in front of the live audience, right? Mm. Say so you're in a bad mood. It's bad enough I have to deal with Corrente, so I'm certainly not going to deal with you. So here's how we're going to settle this tonight: a good old-fashioned three-way. You filter, and Humphrey Jacobs the first. Go drink this coffee, then I guess we gotta get moving, huh? This is for the fairgrounds, so they'll let me run shows here and stuff. Okay, thank you. Buddy. Thank you. We'll let see. me know if you need anything else. Okay? All right, perfect. I'll be around. We'll be here. Do we have anything that's going to get thrown on last minute? Any any dark matches that you can think of, or anything like that? Just so we're going to have to run through the show to probably figure that out. Yeah. Um, are we do any darks? Let's, let's see. The Regals are on the show. Yep. Shark bite. Shark baits on. I can't yep. call him a shark bite. Shark baits on the show. Who's the other guy you are? Uh, King Snake's leaving. Rashid Ali. He's leaving. He's I, I think that's three, right? We're doing three. Three episodes. Yeah. So it is three. My mom and I used to watch wrestling a lot when I was a kid, and she's dead now. So my mom died five years ago. So. Uh, she didn't. She never got to see this. She would lose her mind if she saw this. Monday Night Raw is one of the biggest wrestling shows on the planet. Like four million people watch it every week. And I was on it last year. We're not outsiders. We're from right here in Denver, Colorado. Right when I walked out in the Pepsi Center with 10,000 people cheering and stuff, it's like, man, I miss my mom. But I didn't know how bad until I walked out on the show that I used to watch with her. We used to watch it every Monday night for 15 years straight. And now I'm on it and she's dead and she can't even see it. That sucks. Life's kind of weird. <laughs> but I mean, wrestling fans saw it. That clip got played on WrestleMania, the biggest wrestling event of the year. A clip from that match got played on it, so I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't have to wrestle any more matches. I was on WrestleMania, damn it. <laughs> when I was a kid, the first time I ever saw wrestling was WrestleMania 7. Had to 
quit WWF. Months before this match, the Macho Man dumped his girlfriend for a new woman. Elizabeth, he dumped her and he got Sherry as a new girlfriend. At the end, the Ultimate Warrior won and he left triumphant. So Macho Man's landed in the ring defeated. I've never seen wrestling before this. Defeated. And his girlfriend comes in and now she's fired too. Sorry, I need to touch that. She's fired too. So she takes off her shoe and she starts hitting him because her meal ticket's gone. And then from the back, Miss Elizabeth, the girlfriend he dumped, comes out, beats up the woman that's beaten him, throws her out of the ring, and she tries to help him up. And he gets up and he's, he's, uh, uh, and he thinks Elizabeth was the one beating him up. Elizabeth with her arms outstretched. And then he looks at her and everybody starts cheering and she just looks at him and says, I love you. And she's crying and then they hug. And the audience, I'm going to get choked up talking about it. The audience fucking loses their minds. And everybody starts crying. They're doing shots at the whole crowd. And everybody's like, uh, uh, uh. That storyline gave me something to care about. And that's why wrestling's so good. If a match doesn't have a storyline, well, then it's, okay. It's a wrestling match. Wrestling moves are cool, I guess. That's not why wrestling fans watch wrestling. People like a couple years back, they're like, oh, pro wrestling in Colorado, you know, what's that? But I'd like to put us, like, help put us, like, on the map in pro wrestling. Um, not only just as a, a woman, but just as a wrestler in general. A lot of guys go out and do it on the weekends, and we call them weekend, weekend warriors, but the guys we bring here, they're, they're in it to win it, and they're here to, they're here to make a living out of it and hone their craft. I never want to retire, let's put it that way. I, I don't want to get to 65 and be like, I can't wait to get out of here. I want to be 90 years old on a headset in the back barking at people. I don't think it does end. <laughs> I mean, the documentary itself, definitely. I mean, it, it's going to end depending on uh, kind of everything that's going on. I think it ends with you seeing a bunch of people training and, and succeeding and wrestling and performing and having the time of their lives. I think it ends with to be continued, honestly.